Hare Krishna. So welcome for the fifth and the last episode of our five sheets of holistic health seminar. And today we'll be discussing how the Panchakosh, this concept, can be applied on the nation. And also after that, if time permits, we will also speak about how it gets applied on the corporate sector also. So, <clears throat> uh, my first question to all of you, let us start this discussion with a question. When we are talking about nation, so we all, uh, some of us are Indians, some of us are Americans, some of us are Australian, some of us are, there are so many people who are watching this uh, <coughs> video right now. So when we say, like when I say I am an Indian, I'm sure most of us are Indian who are watching this. So when, when I say that I am an Indian, what actually makes me an Indian? What makes me a Bharatiya? Is it only a passport? My passport proves that I am an Indian. Is that the thing? Is it that, you know, uh, all, like, we all are Indians. So, uh, how do we all call ourselves Indian? Is that we all are having one opinion? Not possible. There are, in one country, there are so many opinions and there are so many countries, they have got sometimes one opinion. <laughs> so that cannot be a parameter to call ourselves Indian. So what, what is, what makes all of us Indians? Is there one tradition, one culture? No. As I said yesterday, uh, after every 100 or 200 kilometers, there is change in the culture. There is change in dress code. There is change in food. Then there is change in, uh, you know, the way the buildings and the huts and all those uh, buildings are made. So, there is difference in culture also. Then what makes us one, at what level are we one as Indians? Does, is there, uh, we have, do we have got one language? No, there are so many languages. So, <coughs> Do we have got one land? No, sometimes there is also bifurcation and India and Pakistan and India and Bangladesh happens. So sometimes uh, the land geography, the political uh, geography, everything changes. So then what makes us Indian? Is there one economy? Arthavyavastha? No, even this is not the factor. So we all have got one consciousness. That is very important. That this country, India, I belong to this country. And it is my motherland. So unless we have got that consciousness, that connection with the land as a mother, and I want to serve in some way, then only we can say that, yes, I am a Bharatiya. So, uh, let us start today's discussion uh, before starting. Let us pray to our motherland. So all of you all can sing with me. Vande Mataram Vande Mataram Sujala Sufala Malaya Jashitala Sasya Shamala Mataram Vande Mataram Shubhra Jyotsna Pulakitaya Mini Pulya kusumita drumadala shobhini Suhasini Sumadhura bhashini Sukhadam varadam 
ಮಾತರಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರಂ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ one feels that he is in the lap of his mother and this mother is so beautiful decorated with so many gardens so many wonderful beautiful forests and she is decorated with such beautiful purifying rivers like ganga yamuna saraswati purifying the land ever since time immemorial and there are so much uh, beautiful valleys and mountains and more than everything such beautiful simple hearted people and dynamic people and competent people and tolerant people and humble people and people who offer respect to others so this is our india and therefore when one wants to give life for such a country for such a nation surely swarga is already there he can claim swarga <laughs> when he offers service but people in the swarga they also want they are in line to take birth in this country called india so let us understand how we can serve with this panchakosh concept by implementing it very nicely so if we have to serve we have to know how what are the factors which can allow me to serve very systematically and very nicely so before starting this class i would like to invoke the blessings of our acharyas om agyana timirandhasya gnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮೈಹಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವೀರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ್ ಆದಿ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಡೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ to our nation bhartiyas give first preference to bharat first priority to bharat even before their family even before anything else because they consider this nation as their mother and this is not right now today but it is since time immemorial Draupadi for example when Krishna went to Hastinapur as a Shanti Dut and when he returned Draupadi asked him a question 
Krishna, how can you go there as a Shanti Dut after so much of the insult of your Sakhi, of myself, and you went there as a Shanti Dut? So at that time, when she got angry on Krishna, of course, in that Asat Sabha, where it, it was attempted to strip her naked in front of everyone, it was only Krishna who saved her. No one else, neither Dronacharya, nor Bhishma, nor Dhritarashtra, nor the Pandavas, no one helped. But it was only Krishna who helped her. And that is why he was so dear to her heart. And when you are angry, you went out your anger only to a near and dear ones. So she asked Krishna, how could you go as a Shanti Dut? So Krishna actually made her understand that if so many people, if they are going to die, and if we can avoid this genocide, even after tolerating, if we have to tolerate that insult, but if we can avoid this genocide, it is worth it. That is the first thing. And the second thing is, Krishna did not want that blame to go on the head of Draupadi. It was not Draupadi to be. And when Krishna asked for five villages for the Pandavas, and when Duryodhan rejected that proposal, the entire burden, the entire blame went on the head of Duryodhan. And Krishna, he made the cause of that war, you know, from an individual to the Rashtra. It is not just for an individual, there should be so much of genocide. But he gave a real qualified right uh, uh, reason cause for the war so this is you know what Krishna's intelligence is so he also showed nation the importance must be towards the nation not only that even before that in Treta Yuga Sri Ram and Srimati Sita Maharani they both chose to live separate and Sita decided to go to the one and stay. Why? Just for nation. Nation first. There are n number of examples like that. Bhishma, Bhishma Pitama, he went to the uh, to his mother, Ganga and he asked her, Mother, please tell me should I be loyal or should I be righteous? Because if I become loyal to the throne of Hastinapur, I do injustice to the Pandavas, which is not right. And if I try to do justice for Pandavas, if I try to be righteous, then I have to be disloyal to the throne of Hastinapur. And I have taken my vows to always remain loyal to the throne of Hastinapur. Now, what was his vow and why was his vow? This vow was taken for the marriage of his father. So, one side is the vow taken for the marriage of his father. And on the other side, there was the welfare of the nation. Now, Kansa Palada Bhari tha? Which side was heavier? Of course, the nation. Same question. He asked to Krishna also, but both Ganga and Krishna both told him that you are, uh, you know all the scriptures and you yourself are a Bhagavad. So you take your decision. You will take right decision. But somehow that decision was not right. From the point of view, of course, Bhishma Pitama was a great uh, <coughs> devotee of the Lord. And at that level, Devotees are always right and they always want to, the inner reason is that he always wanted to show the world that even if Bhishma Pitama stands on the side of Adharma, even he will have to get, be defeated and he will also have to die. So, uh, and he always wanted to glorify Krishna. That wherever Krishna is there, 
देर धर्म इज देर देर सक्सेस इज देर यत्र योगेश्वर कृष्ण यत्र पार्थो धनुर्धर तत्र श्री विजयोर सो ही वॉन्टेड टू ऑल्सो प्रूव दैट सो इंटरनली वॉज अ दो ही वॉज अ डिवोटी ऑफ कृष्ण बट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग फ्रॉम पॉलिटिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फ्रॉम अ फ्रॉम एक्चुअली पंचकोश पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ही डिड नॉट फॉलो द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेशन फर्स्ट एंड दैट इज वाई then he had to be defeated so we even in today's date i really feel myself fortunate to be witnessing so many leaders who are so patriotic now and because of which our nation is uh, coming up so they are also following this principle of nation first so what is desh dharma so <clears throat> desh dharma is you know serving the nation with divine consciousness so <clears throat> desh dharma is the expression of consciousness of respecting protecting and spreading the divinity of the nation spreading the the auspiciousness of the nation spreading the importance of the nation and spreading the relevance of the nation so that is basically desh dharma and for that what qualities are required the qualities of character sacrifice uh, competence wisdom all these qualities when they come together and when there is the affinity to bring up the divinity and show it to the world and spread it to the world shrila prabhupad uh, did this great you know he expressed this great desha prem he circumambulated the planet 14 times and wherever he would go he glorified bharat so <clears throat> uh let us have a small uh, game i will tell you a name of a a thing and you have to identify in your mind the name of the country which is there in my mind also let's see whether it matches if i say chocolates in my mind it is switzerland does it match <laughs> when i say uh, technology germany does it match when we say discipline and systems japan yeah let let me make it little easier for you kangaroos <laughs> yes australia covid 19 let us not take the name terrorism again let us not take the name we all know yeah like that a word is connected to the country the con- the country is known is famous for so many aspects so what is india known for india is known for divinity spirituality so india <clears throat> has the glorious history actually has shown that india how divine india is there is a culture of respect there is a culture of respect towards cows there is a culture of respect towards saints there is a culture of respect towards women old children there is a respect towards <coughs> holy dhams towards one forests to all the rivers there is respect towards uh, divine scriptures there is respect for um, vedic scriptures yeah i said vedic scriptures towards temples towards deities in the temple yeah so this is a land of respect there is respect for one another and that is why this nation it becomes divine so what is when we say desha prem what is desha prem actually is it a love for a piece of land 
So even dogs and cats and birds, they also have got a strong affinity towards, you know, a piece of land. So is it that? Is Desha Prem means offering a lot of enjoyment, sense gratification to the citizens? Is that Desha Prem? Let us understand this. So Desha Prem is actually respecting and protecting the divinity. That is very, very important. So it is not just a feeling, it is an activity, it is a service. It is a service means actions which is performed without any expectation in return. So that is basically Desha. So it also, the there is a synonymous word to it, Karma Yoga. So when that is performed, Karma Yoga is performed, yeah, we not just get some benefits but we get the supreme benefit but there are people who are pseudo patriots so there is pseudo patriotism also and time exposes that but till then these pseudo patriots have usurped looted the country so what has to be done we need power of discrimination to a to a lot of extent today that power of discrimination is missing we are getting cheated again and again for many years we cannot understand between divine and the demoniac that is the problem krishna has dedicated an entire chapter for you know the 16th chapter towards understanding what is divine and what is demoniac and only your first few verses he has given for divine rest the entire chapter is about demoniac thing hmm? how to understand demoniac personality demoniac mood and what is the destination of all the demoniac people <laughs> like that so what are the basic necessities of the uh, of the citizens the basic necessities of the citizen is ahar that is the basic provision then peace Shanti, then they require freedom and they require initiative, Porushya. So when they don't have this, then there is problem. So if they don't have provision, then they have got lack of time. So if there is no time, because if you are just busy in gathering provision, then what will happen? You will not have time. And if you don't have time, then where you will endeavor for spirituality? So, provision has to be ensured. Then, peace. If the peace is lacking, then what happens? People lose their pool and they lose their vivek, power of discrimination. So, when, and that is why you will find all these pseudo patriots, the politicians, you know, what they do? They create unrest in the country so that the citizens cannot think properly and they cannot understand what is good for them their own welfare where is their own welfare they can't understand so always these plans shadiyantra is made and when freedom is lacked then what happens the competence is lost like for example our indian soldiers for many years they were not allowed to use their weapons and there was so much of stone pelting at Kashmir and poor soldiers they used to get wounded and they were there was no human right for our own Indian soldiers so what was done the freedom of theirs was taken and therefore no therefore no competence so whenever freedom is you know lacking then competence is the result is there is no competence and the last is initiative the power share when that is lacking then what happens the enthusiasm is lost so therefore these four things are very very important so to fulfill this basic necessities there are there has to be proper systems so like yesterday we discussed in the village uh, Panchakosh, in the same way in the nation Panchakosh also, the same four Vyavasthas, 
द अर्थव्यवस्था द शिक्षण व्यवस्था द राजव्यवस्था एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड द धर्म व्यवस्था एंड द धर्म व्यवस्था शुड एक्चुअली कंट्रोल ऑल द अदर थ्री इफ दे डोंट कंट्रोल ऑल द अदर थ्री देन देर इज अनाचार सो द एसेंस एसेंस ऑफ धर्म इज वॉट एसेंस ऑफ धर्म इज टू डील विथ अदर पर्सन द वे वी वुड एक्सपेक्ट द अदर टू डील विथ अस सिंपल आई हैव टू बिहेव इन सच अ वे द वे आई वुल एक्सपेक्ट द अदर वन टू बिहेव विथ मी सो एंड देन द फ्रीडम विल बी एटोमेटिकली इस्टैब्लिश्ड so this kind of freedom has to be protected with proper systems with proper arthavyavastha with proper rajavyavastha proper shikshan vyavastha but there is always bondage why people are not free there are some various factors because of those factors the freedom is taken away from the citizens so what are those factors we will try to see one by one so due to false pride weakness of heart it is because of uh, fear and greed of course then due to the atrocities by miscreants and that is how uh, terrorism and riots they happen then due to demoniac society then they have influence over uh, you know media and politicians and education you know the policy makers of education the policy makers of trade and that is how they control the demoniac society then they don't allow the good culture to prevail so decrease in the mode of goodness happens and when there is a decrease in the mode of goodness then tamogun rises and because of which then there is envy there is pride we become victim of greed and the brain and heart you know it it becomes weak and therefore Uh, that freedom is lost then tamasik bhojan yeah this is also very very the, the tamasik bhojan first of all brings diseases then mental anxiety they lose power of discrimination so due to the lack of satogun then all these kinds of they again fall victim of greed and envy because of tamasik bhojan then the tamasik propaganda you know at the political level at the social level uh, at the colleagues you know on the whatsapp so much of false propaganda tamasik propaganda goes on and again of course preaching so preaching is very very important because of preaching only the kshatriyas have attained samadhi in the battlefield can we imagine by hearing geeta so many soldiers indian soldiers they know the importance of spirituality and they practice it in the battlefield and attain samadhi and on the other hand the other kind of preaching which is done by uh, so many today's social media people from brahmanical class they do abominable activities again it is because of preaching only propaganda isn't it because of shailya's preaching or you can say you know mockery karna lost and arjuna who had left his gandiva because of the same preaching the upadesha of krishna he got up he got encouraged nashto moha smritin smritin labdhwa so he got up and he started so propaganda is very very important so it is again divine and the demoniac propaganda there will always be a tussle then uh whenever there is a fall of any country first thing that has to be understood is that there is a fall in the good qualities and therefore people given to greed and envy then there is bad politics bad governance bad law and order pollution of women then there is class difference between rich and the poor so therefore what is required we require a able administrator and if we want an able administrator what uh, what all are the characteristics required 
so yes he should be ojasvi he should have be full of character so how does a person such person be uh, be gotten such a person is first of all he should be a he should be the <coughs> country citizen secondly he should be born through proper garbhadhan sanskar if that has happened properly then that person will be of good nature having sacrifice and service attitude and then such a person can actually create and such you know for certain generations then our country can actually grow so um, for that daivi varnashram is required so daivi varnashram varnashram is itself uh, misunderstood by many people they think that is a caste system but no daivi in daivi varnashram if we know the principles they and the systems first of all the policies the rules and regulations of the country the manual the what you call constitution a king cannot make it only a uh, a self realized a selfless transcendentalist such a person only can make rules and regulations and the king only has to follow it and that also with the guidance of all his mantri mandal or with his ministers so that is the power of a brahmana so who is a brahmana not the one who is born of a brahmin a brahmana is he who has got uh, there are nine qualities that are expressed in uh, bhagavad gita by krishna shamo damah tap shaucham shantir arjavam evacha gnanam vidnyanam astikyam brahma karma swabhavajam so he must be having these qualities of you know he should be peaceful he should be learned and he should be having tapascharya so there are so many qualities that are given in bhagavad gita if he doesn't have that then he is not a brahmin though he is born in a brahmin family and someone who is born in a shudra family but if he has got this quality he is a brahmin he can be initiated so prabhupad has <coughs> given brahmin initiation to so many every person on the planet earth uh, i mean so many uh, people from various countries so uh, brahma janati iti brahman so person who understands the nature of the transcendence the absolute truth then he is brahman so he is the embodiment of values and principle which is given in the scriptures so he must be so he performs rituals he performs the 16 uh, samskaras he performs yagya for all the people in the society yeah based on his purity people get benefit of those yagyas and then he takes dakshina so he can only take dan and dakshina and if he doesn't get it then he has to beg and that is the qualification of a brahmana if he has got these qualities and if he lives on begging so brahmanas can make policies but he cannot have he cannot be earning money such a wonderful system in uh, varnashram and what about the king the king cannot make the law but what is his function his function is to collect the taxes and always he uh, you know he is controlled by the brahmanas he cannot be independently deciding something no and therefore there is no corruption there is transparency whenever any sage comes to his uh, to his court he gets up and makes him sit on the throne and offers his entire kingdom at the lotus feet of a sage and then the sage returns it back to him he doesn't keep it for himself and becomes the king <laughs> because they are all transcendentalists they don't require all these things but they come because they have compassion for the kingdom for the people and therefore they come to check the king whether it is he is doing the right thing or not and then when they give the kingdom back to the king it is the prasad and when the prasad is received he respects that prasad he doesn't exploit he doesn't exploit his position 
he <clears throat> does the needful with utter uh, precision and respect so he gives his life for the protection of his subjects that is akshatriya so he again he protects dharma he protects cows he is responsible for the protection of brahmanas the devotees the temples deities women old children everything environment so that is his function the main role of the administrator uh, administrator is to ensure the implementation of the varnashram dharma and he must ensure that everyone is engaged according to his qualities according to his skills according to his propensities whether he is engaged or not each one should be engaged that is his job and ultimately the kshatriya must ensure a god conscious culture that is he must be implementing those things he should be arranging the festivals ensuring it so uh, that is about brahmana and kshatriya then vaishyas the vaishyas they are they can do uh, goraksha and krishi so farming and cow protection and vanijya business so that is what is the function of the vaishya but just like a brahmana uh, he cannot earn money though he can make the law and king he uh, you know he cannot make the law he can collect taxes in the same way a vaishya he can earn a lot of wealth no problem but he will not be given a social position that is the rule in varnashrama he will not be uh, because money so nowadays that is what is happening if you have money then you have position in the society so <coughs> and shudra a shudra does you know service to the society and he earns his livelihood in that way so the people exhibiting the intellectual and renouncing prowess like the sanyasis the uh, vanaprastis the brahmanas the brahmacharis so they are always at the higher pedestal they are at the higher they get higher respect than the others so brahmachari ashram it is the you know the glory of the country so this brahmachari ashram the brahmacharis the population becomes dynamic glorious you know it is really free when it is checked when the administrators the government when it is checked by the such celibate class so brahmacharya celibacy actually it brings vitality you know sacrifice wisdom so person becomes imbued with physical mental uh, power and chastity so no one dares to attack his internal freedom and such a free person he only can be you know can give organic freedom to the society so glorification of divine prosperity instead of material richness that is what is you know that gives us organic freedom so like uh, shivaji maharaj he won his battles he became the coronated king rana pratap he lost the battle of halli ghati and he was living in the forest for most of the time rani jhasi rani lakshmi bai of jhasi she also lost and she was killed but we indians bharatiyas uh, have got higher position for shivaji maharaj and a lower position for rana pratap no why because for us it is not that one who is uh, who has won who has achieved success he is great no for us the glory the glorification is towards the chivalry the glorification is because the qualities that they have shown so that tatva of bhagavad gita is always there ma faleshu kadachana we are not interested in the fruits krishna always sees the efforts then that is how that importance is given so high ideals 
when the nation has got high ideals then it does not you know fall down to lower activities it breeds divinity for example for high ideals indra had to he got you know cursed and he became a sewer a pig because he could not show high ideals and at the same time on the other hand uh <clears throat> the you know how uh, we respect the shrutis how we respect all the scriptures but the blasphemer of a uh, of the shrutis we have glorified him why for high ideals who is that yes gautam buddha nindasi yajna vir deha raha shuti jatam सदय दर्शित पशु घात केशव धृता बुद्ध शरीर जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे सो ही ब्लैस्फेम द वेदिक लिटरेचर बट बिकॉज ही फॉलोड हाई आइडियल्स इन हिज लाइफ ही इज ऑल्सो ग्लोरिफाइड ऑफकोर्स इज द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड इट so bharat has organic freedom only because of high ideals so shrila prabhupada also you know had high ideals and because of which so many disciples of his they are at his lotus feet serving the divinity that he has given him them the spirituality so now let us see what is the annamay kosh of the nation the annamay kosh of the nation is i am just recapitulating the annamay kosh of the nation is the number of cows the number of uh, how many saints are there in your country how many senior citizens women children are protected then general population how much population is there then soil fertile lands rivers and other water resources forests wildlife minerals and other natural resources favorable seasons you see bharat is so rich we have got six seasons right so that is the annamay kosh and what is the pranamay kosh of the nation the pranamay kosh of the nation can be seen as as we what are what is the domain of pranamay kosh energy yeah energy and skills and talent so pranamay kosh of the nation is the good governance agricultural growth industrial growth military strength advancement in the science and technology then education and literacy sports cultural and traditional heritage employment to all so all these things if we you know that is the pranamay kosh then what is the manomay kosh of the fam, uh, of the nation the monomay kosh of the nation is how the media responds you know to current events response of the government to every national uh, social political economic issue then response of the citizens during the emergencies and natural disasters to the affected areas then general lifestyle of the citizens then crime rate divorce rate then spiritual practices of citizens and celebration of festivals so all that thing comes under the manomay kosh of the nation then the vidnanmay kosh of the nation is the national narrative you know policies for preservation of dharma then education system social structure environmental harmony then economic planning degree of corruption that happens in the nation judicial power and stability and transparency of the market so that is the vidnanmay kosh of the nation and what is the anandmay kosh of the nation the anandmay kosh means gratefulness service contribution to everyone else so nation's contribution for the welfare of the world what all has this nation given to the world then for the foreign policies what are the foreign policies of this nation so all these things come under 
the annamai kosha we can see which is the where is the biggest temple of the world it is not in india it is ankurvat yeah so you can see that in india though this culture this religion sanatan dharma it is in india but still how come the biggest temple was outside because people they they could see the divinity and they could take it in fact near the bungalow of our us president at the central library just at the gate there is a big 13 feet high deity of saraswati ma saraswati ya veena varini and pustaka dharini now this how did this deity come there at the central library india gave it as a gift no it was given by the uh, the chief of indonesia and i think 90 more than 90% of the population is islamic but still they have got respect for this culture how is it because this culture is so sweet and therefore uh, <clears throat> you know this is the the anandamay kosh of the of our country it is given to everyone so this is how uh, in uh, i think we have spoken about country about uh, panchakosh applying uh, on a nation for quite some time now we'll speak about how the same i'll take just a few minutes now uh, we'll speak how even corporate in corporate uh, this panchakosh can be applied so <clears throat> in today's world the corporate it is based on greed right profitability and like that but in the true success of a profession is when it makes itself irrelevant for example if there is no requirement of doctor that means everyone is healthy that means that is the success of the uh, of the medical field so doctor becomes irrelevant he has empowered everyone to be healthy and that is the the true uh, success so in the same way if the if the anandamay kosha of the corporate is well established to make itself irrelevant <laughs> difficult but we can think about this thing if the corporate the ananmay kosha the uh, the main purpose of the corporate becomes god consciousness is it possible there is a possibility shown on the face of this earth right here when i am sitting in the bhakti vedanta hospital yeah this hospital is for god consciousness and the main uh, motto is serving serving in devotion with right consciousness so uh, <clears throat> when we say corporate annamay so what is the annamay kosh of the corporate let us see that so annamay kosh of the corporate is no no how much capital where is the location of the premise what is the size of the premise availability of resources that is human and material both then go down reserves and surplus then in dealings you know is there transparency then the what is the work culture then patients during initial stages when the results do not come out you know good so profitability is not the focus isn't it so that is how then consistency in performance consistency in product then quality and availability maintenance of record branding and promotion why because annamay kosh means bodily beauty also so branding and promotion then standardization logo creation all these things they fall in the annamay kosh and then if we have to see the unfavorable factors of annamay so un what is un unfavorable for annamay lazy or intoxication addicted staff 
then unscientific recruitment, conflicts between departments, malnutrition staff or you know unattended staff, inappropriate working conditions of uh, for staff, then disease accidents, then unrestricted irrational staff demands if there are, then they form labor you know labor union and, and so many things. So that all these things are unfavorable for Annamai Kosh. Then comes Pranamai Kosh. So what is, how Pranamai Kosh is reflected in corporate? So the energy levels, skills and talents of that corporate. So performance of various operations, you know, manufacturing, transporting, sales, customers, customer service, etc. So all these things come under that. Then strength of talented staff. How many talented staff are there? That is the Pranamai Kosh. And then efficiency, profitability, all these things are seen in the uh, in Pranamai Kosh. Then efficient systems, intelligence of the, of the organizers, how they you know make come together and they make the things happen. How how much empowerment is given to the staff, you know, or small small things they have to refer to their uh, uh, their big bosses if they are empowered then yes that the pranamai kosh is very good so what is unfavorable for pranamai kosh of the corporate strikes mismanagement then power politics you know all these things miscommunication then tolerance to indiscipline so all these things are you know unfavorable for pranamai kosh so now let us see what is the monomai kosh of the corporate so monomai kosh means to respond to the needs of the senses that is the that is what we how we described right monomai kosh through thinking feeling and willing in a given situation with the help of the intelligence so that means the unfavorable factors are fear greed and illusion and what is favorable the favorable factors for monomai kosh in a corporate is trustworthy authorities you know the staff can have faith in the authorities then that is something good then obedient staff then uh, staff welfare policies that is a manumai kosh the way the customer feedbacks are handled interdepartment communication then the staff and work ratio that also shows then salary benefits that are given to the staff and the ombudsman means uh, a person who is who is knowing everyone's feelings and needs and he gels with everyone he makes the if there is a conflict he can resolve that conflict by you know being a right you know a proper establishing a proper communication between the two authorities so that is ombudsman then vidyan my kosha is reflected by you know uh, how is the manual the manual and procedures how effective is the meeting of all the managers then proper analysis of maintained records then planning of budget mock drills trainings second line manager creation cost cutting initiatives practice of non violent communication that we discussed yesterday observation feelings needs and request then uh, making working of the staff simple, comfortable and joyous. So if that is done, that means yes, these people are having sense, intelligence, right? Then the Ananmay Kosha, it is reflected in the vision and mission of the corporate, of that organization and the social initiatives of the organization, the CSR that we say. What the corporate is doing for the society so in this way the panchakosha of the corporate is there then category there are posts in different uh, koshas let us see the what are the what are the category of posts according to panchakosh so the annamai post is what that is the jobs which do not involve skill and are paid according to time and the volume of the work then pranamai it is the skill jobs which are performed by trained and experienced staff. Then monomic jobs are those which involve uh, being sensitive, 
towards customer you know customer service then staff satisfaction according to various time place and circumstance then vidyan may kosha jobs are involving manual creation system designing planning all those things that comes in the vidyan may kosha and then the anand may kosha the anand may job is involving representation of the organization guiding and offering vision to the people so that is the that so such posts we, we can understand you know who is at which level at what post then even the quality of the workers you know sometimes a person may be just a housekeeping staff but his quality can be anandamay let us understand this the quality of a worker according to panchakosh so first let us take annamay kosh so the annamay kosh that means volume of work so just does what is told to him in a given time place and circumstance then his appearance is appropriate example up to date uniform and well equipped with the required tools then he ensures a particular volume of job in a particular time he is not expected to use intelligence about efficiency and profitability etc he is a annamay person there are some staff like that so that person these kind of people they fall in the annamay kosh he has to be inspired for his growth so that is a annamay worker but then there is a pranamay worker so what uh, pranamay yeah. so pranamay worker he has got efficiency and profitability idea that means he does job with skill and talent ensuring efficiency and profitability he is found suggesting better ideas to superiors he refuses to give up a difficult and challenging task he exhibits determination and patience he must have a sensitive and competent competent superior who is equally determined and you know in accomplishing tasks otherwise this person will get fried up then he must perceive impartial uh, impartial system of growth because he is a worker a uh, he has got a lot of energy so he also must be seeing his growth path there are six requirements of every individual first is certainties means uh, his certainties means roti kapda makan his provision whatever is the basic requirements then second requirement is uncertainties he needs some adventure in life uncertainties you know everything is not just easy i want some challenges uncertainties that is also his requirement his need the third requirement is selfless love then fourth requirement is significance then the fifth requirement is growth and the last requirement is contribution he needs to contribute that is his innate uh, requirement so these are the six spot whenever someone whenever we get dejected in life disappointed in life we should check these six spots something must be missing one of the six must be miss missing there is no seventh thing one is certainties uncertainties selfless love significance growth and contribution so then let us go to the next point the quality of the worker in the manomay kosh so sensitive to feelings and needs of customer and staff so that is that speaks about the emotional intelligence that person has got emotional intelligence so he has the ability to perceive the thoughts feelings and needs of the people he responds to them promptly according to his capacity and satisfies them he is good at timely communication regarding a particular important issue time place and sometimes you know big big managers are not sensitive but a clerical staff who is a uh, by post he is at the manomay level but his acumen his you know he understands he is sensitive at the right time and right uh, you know circumstance he will go and uh, get connected to the higher ups and gets the thing done then 
he is not affected by you know bad behavior and mental stress and due to workload uh, on the contrary he feels very satisfied why because he can manage his mind very nicely so <clears throat> that is a manomay worker then comes the vidnyanmay kosh worker that means the ability to perceive the needs of the organization and the design system and to design systems to fulfill them so that is a vidnyanmay kosh worker he has talent of you know four sidedness decision making he is always approached during critical time yeah he can take quick fatafat decisions quick decisions then he first seeks all possible options he will analyze very nicely he is matured and good in communication skills he is expert in binding everyone to the cause and he exhibits leadership qualities that is oj and tyag at times he will also sacrifice so such a person is a the worker in vidnyanmay kosh and then the last is the anandmay kosha a person who is a worker in the anandmay kosha he represents the institution gives priority to the image and welfare of the institute so that means he remains loyal to the organization through thick and thin and he is the kind of a person because of whom the organization stands and he is the embodiment of the principles of the organization so that is a manomay uh, sorry anandmay worker so in this way you know even corporate if we have to analyze and you know we can actually understand the panchakosh uh, sorry corporate through panchakosh perspectives and if we understand that if we can put all these things in the you know in each box properly of panchakosh then the decision making also becomes we know what is lacking where and the decision making becomes very good so in this way today we saw the the implementation of panchakosh at the level of nation and also at the level of corporate organization so in this way we come to an end of the entire uh, web seminar of five episodes so i request uh, all of you to please uh, give your <laughs> honest feedbacks and this is my first time that i have actually uh, tried to you know uh, give a seminar online uh, i have never uh, given such a seminar so but i really very very since last four days i have been seeing all the feedbacks i am really grateful to you for encouraging me so wonderfully so many people have seen it uh, so i am Uh, offering my dandavats to all of you thank you very much hare krishna